Hey guys, Goblin King is here with another deck tech video. Uh, this one's going to be on a Death Touch deck. Um, just a pre warning this deck really makes your friends mad because it kind of makes them feel like <laughs> they can't do anything. So it's pretty frustrating on their part. Um, but I mean, you know, every deck can be beat. This deck's not very, this is a budget version, but here we go. So the first deck you'll need is the Viridian Longbow. Um, it gives a, you ta equip it to a creature, and it gives a creature, tap it to do one damage to target creature or player. Now, if the creature had Death Touch, you just tap the creature, choose the target creature you want to kill, and as long as there's not protection or anything like that, it automatically dies. But it, obviously it doesn't work on uh, a player themselves, they can't die to Death Touch, or um, a Planeswalker. So we run four of these. Pathway Arrows is another uh, card exactly like Verdian Longbow, except for it has a drawback of uh, pay two mana to tap it. Um, so, I mean, it's really just an al alternative, so it's just three extra longbows, just added a little disadvantage. Our first creature is a three drop, and it's Turn Timber Ballisk. It's a 2 1 with Death Touch, and the Landfall ability is actually what why it's in this deck. Whenever a creature you enters, whenever a land enters the battlefield, you can make a creature block this guy. And obviously he has death touch, so they die. So that's the point. Unless they have free strike, then that kind of serves no point. The second creature is Deadly Recluse. Two drop for a 1-2 with reach and death touch. Uh, reach, you don't have to have the bow on there, so hopefully if, you know, if someone's running flying creatures, they won't attack you. Typhoid Rats. We have two of these, just one drop for a 1-1 one, one death touch. Thornworld Archer. Uh, reach, death touch, two drop for a 2-1. Again, re reach really helps with death touch. And then Pakrez Trojan. Uh, one for a 1-1 one, one with death touch. Four of these. And we have a few spells in here. Um, obviously the deck could be improved. Uh, Murder's sort of inconsistent with the two black mana, but, you know, it had to make do for what I started with. Uh, we, have, we run two Murders for kill spells, obviously. Target creature. There are definitely de better kill spells out there. Um, two Fogs. Again, these could also be part of the sideboard if you wanted. Um, Two fogs, because who doesn't like fog? Two distresses. Now these are very nice for taking out uh, cards that can wipe the board with your small creatures and bows. And you, but what's good is it's two black mana, but you reveal their hand, so they have to show their hand, and you choose a non-land card, so you can choose really anything but a land. Uh, this is another card. Uh, I only have two of them, but I would definitely run more three maybe four. Um, first Strike Death Touch. It's uh, Jalissa the Traitor. Two green and one black mana. Um, whenever cr a creature an opponent controls is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So that would be if somebody, I don't know, milled you or destroyed one of your Viridian Longbows or Pathway Arrows and you could just get it right back. So I run two of those, but of course um, those are one of the more expensive cards in the deck. They're not very expensive at all, but they're definitely necessary. Now to the win conditions. Now, there these are the cards that you're going to need to pull in order to win the game. So Phage the Untouchable. It's a lot of text. It's uh, a huge cast, four black and three colorless, and it's only a four-four. But the ability, whenever it deals damage to a combat creature, to when it deals combat creature, holy crap. When it deals combat damage to a creature, destroy that creature, and it can't be regenerated. So, essentially, death touch, but they can't be regenerated. Now, when Phage Untouchable enters the battlefield, if you didn't cast it from your hand, you lose the game. I mean, the only way that could really happen, uh, there's not very many that would be, like, cascading, maybe. Um, and then this is what makes the card shine. Whenever Phage deals combat damage to a player, the player loses the game. So, essentially, it's death touch for players. So this is definitely one of your win conditions. The second win condition, we have Varaska the Unseen. Uh, I run two of these, you could run maybe three. Uh, I run three phages, I know that, because um, she's a big creature to cast. Um, her plus one, 
Well, first off, she's a five for uh, five loyalty, so that's not bad. Her plus one, until your next turn, when I, whenever a creature deals combat damage to the planeswalker, you destroy the creature. So hopefully that will make some people, you know, kind of steer away from attacking a creature. But really, if they don't attack her and lose their creature, they lose the game anyways. Because if you let her get to her ultimate, which is plus seven, so you only have two turns to pump her up, do her ultimate, and then really you win the game if you have a bow. Which by then you should definitely have a bow. Her minus seven is you put three one one black assassin creature tokens onto the battlefield with whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. So just like Death Touch for players, except for there's three of these. So really you don't have summoning sickness doesn't really pay doesn't really matter against uh, anything because they they just deal one damage. They're not technically attacking. So I run two of these and I run ten swamps, ten forests. Um, obviously you could have um, some dual lands, which I'll get to in a second. And I run two rogues passage for the reason I mean, yeah, it's colorless mana, but you can make a creature unblockable this turn, and that's just another way you can win, with the 1-1 one, one Assassins, or with Phage the Untouchable. And that's pretty frustrating. Two of those, and the rest mana. And then, on the sideboard, well, here's some of the lands you could throw in. Blooming Marsh is a good one. Um, I know there's other dual lands, I just don't have them, because budget. Um, and these are pretty good in the sideboard. Um, I originally had these in the deck until I got Jalissa the Trader. Um, Sunset Trident can give them first, give them first haste, first strike. So if they have first strike, then first strike death touch automatically kills almost everything. So that's pretty helpful. And that's the death, that's the death touch deck. So really, your your uh, ad advice would be to just kind of sit back, play defense until you get it a longbow. Uh, planeswalker or multiple longbows and just shut your opponent out of the game really. So that's really it. If you enjoyed, like the video and subscribe.